family, it's your boy SN TV. Back at y'all with another Chirac Street Legends. And this episode is going to be about none other than Stephen McGee, a.k.a. Lil Steve. Steve Drive. I'm from Steve Drive. D-Block, Steve Drive. Lil Steve is originally from the New Park area, 10-9, or 109th. He used to claim the Lynchman Sircon Gangsters, or the L's. He would make his bone in 600 or 60th and King Drive and 59th and King Drive, what will actually later be renamed Steve Drive in his honor. Before the death of Lil Steve, 600 was actually referred to as Bang City and Brick City as well. Lil Steve actually had a lot of love for both cliques, and even though he wasn't a rapper like his older brother Mimo, he still got on the track. And represent. Yeah, it's the Steve man of fly. Yeah, I fuck with the brick bang city 600. Yeah, that's my fucking click. My New click. Park hills up. Yeah, that's the real click. And I don't know. Lil Steve would move around the 600 area in his eighth grade year. He would begin going to Betsy Ross with the likes of Rondo number no. nine and Tay 600. Lil Steve was actually only with 600 gangbanger for about a year before he was killed. Within that year. Lil Steve would make his mark. Lil Steve had began to play with guns, and he was began to be known for robbing people as well. He was building his name up in the streets in a very short time, and Lil Steve would get to the point to where all of his ops would want to see him gone. One in specific, and that was MOB Scrap. 600, which are BDs, has been known to be involved in several wars. When Steve was alive, they were heavily in tour with Gyro City and MOB. There was also certain frictions in the old block, Front Street, 600 Alliance at first, but then things would smooth out and they would eventually become tighter than ever. Lil Steve would jump off the porch at a very early age and fights would quickly escalate into shootings. Lil Steve and certain guys from MOB would end up shooting at each other a lot. Mind you, these guys were only 12, 13, 14, and 15. They were really in the streets getting it in, and Lil Steve was known as a shooter from 600. He was known as a guy that wasn't going to play with you. And before Lil Steve died, he was actually trying to kill Scrap. He had shot at him several times. Everybody just seemed to love Steve because Lil Steve just had that type of personality. He would just draw people to him. Plus, Lil Steve was the type to take up for people if anybody was bullying anybody that he was cool with. Lil Steve took up for a lot of guys when they were younger, and there was a lot of guys that began to look up to Steve, and they began to really love Steve. If you were 600, Lil Steve wasn't having it. Lil Steve also had family on the other side of the spectrum, such as Gyro City Booby and Gyro City Skinny. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> He's talking about I heard Wooski as you run. Oh, Steve, y'all crazy. Oh, Biddy, they blinked at me one time. Oh, Steve. One time, oh, Lil Steve missed every shot. I was, oh, Steve McGee, I'm laughing at their ass when they shoot. I ain't gonna say no names. I don't know police shit, but he know who he is. He blinked at me one time. That's like 2000, 2013, right before I got booked. I'm tweaking, walking up the street, getting that. I'm blind to see him, too. I'm fooling him. I get that. Phone him, he get that. We both get that. They just get the boom, 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 boom. Steve, yo. Oh. <laughs> oh, I'm going to LA. Oh, Steve, they miss every shot. Oh, Steve, the Trevor, me. And they locked all us up that day. They don't me. I'm in there with them. On Lusty. I'm in the station with them. I ain't never flogged about shit on Lusty. Yes, I got shot at before. They never killed nobody on that hand. See, I buzzed up my last song. I ain't with the wolf and disgusting song. Did y'all talk my part? Skinny from Gyro, that's my little cousin, Keon. That's my blood cousin. He with that shit too on Steve. I don't know. Fuck. 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 That's my blood though. Straight opera. I got a lot of ops cuz and y'all will be surprised. Oh, Lusty, why this nigga King Yellow jumped in my DM this morning? Straight fucking goofy on Steve. 
Then a the motherfucker pop you already on Steve, boy. Motherfucker already shot you. Boo man, what's up? That go another one of my op cousins. Y'all get on his ass. On Steve. <laughs> Boo man, they finna really get on your ass. They go another one of my op cuz that's blood. Get on this little ass, y'all. <laughs> Hell no. Memo 600, who was the older brother of Lil Steve, was a lot more laid back until after his brother died. When his brother died, Memo 600 started getting in the streets heavy. He started pursuing a rap career, and it ended up working. Now Memo 600 is signed with OTF. Yeah. Lil Steve was on the drill scene before the drill scene was considered to be the drill scene. Lil Steve was on scene way before anything took place with the BDs becoming famous. Actually, he died before the BDs became famous. Him and Chief Keith were actually good friends. And according to Mimo, this is how he met Chief Keith. Steve knew everybody that was a part of the early drill scene, whether they were ops or whether they was on his side. And if you think about it, if Steve would have lived, he would have been right in the midst of the drill scene when it first popped off. And who knows? Maybe Steve would have been famous. Look, Steve had been shooting at MOB Scrap. This was confirmed by MOB Scrap himself in a tweet that said something along the lines of, Lil Steve was on his ass, but he couldn't go like that. He had to keep that bacon on him. Basically saying that Lil Steve was trying to take him out and he had to do what he had to do before he ended up dead. On September 19th, 2011, only five days after his 15th birthday, Lil Steve was walking up the block on South Perry Avenue. 60th and South Perry Avenue to be exact. When he was walking up the block, Lil Steve was warned by a guy that rode past on a bike. He told Lil Steve that there was guys waiting in the alley with guns. Lil Steve ignored it. He let it go one ear and out the other. Lil Steve would continue to walk with only a few steps after the man had warned him. Lil Scrap from MOB would pop out of an alley with a shirt over his face and began to shoot. He would end up hitting Lil Steve in his head and in his torso. The police would be called. Lil Steve would be rushed to Stroja Hospital where he would later die. After the death of Lil Steve, the term Steve Drive would become more popular. But here's the thing. Steve Drive was already being used because a guy that went by the name of Stephen Hill would be killed a couple months earlier in that same area. This is initially who Steve Drive was named after. This is why some of the members say Steve Drive two times. After the murder of Lil Steve, Lil Scrap would soon be picked up at his house, which was only two blocks away from the murder scene. Lil Scrap would be picked up and charged with first degree murder and he would have to go to trial and fight those charges. Turns out, someone from 600 actually identified Scrap as being the shooter. Scrap would end up going to trial and beating the case. Scrap would end up being killed three years later in 2014. And I think that what we can learn from the death of Lil Steve is this. A lot of times we underestimate our opponents we tend to think that we're bigger and we're better and we'll always have the ups on them. But in all actuality, it's almost never like that because our opponent has the same 50% chance that we do, which means that we must never underestimate our opponent. We must always take our opponent seriously because just like you can win, your opponent can win. Also, we must learn to pay attention to the signs in anything that we do in life. In this case, Lil Steve had a clear warning. Witnesses said that a guy 
was riding past on a bike and told Steve to stop in his tracks because guys were on the other end of the corner in an alley with guns. In my way of thinking, I'm thinking that maybe Lil Steve thought that these guys could have been some of his guys. Either way, he didn't take heed to the warning and he lost his life behind it. This has been the story of 600 Lil Steve. It's your boy, SNTV.